let's go back to visual studio go to student controller.js write a new method and name it get student by id Let's call the API here using HTTP get verb. Pass the API route along with the host URL and pass student ID with it. The ID which is in our browser. It's called parameter ID. We can get the parameter ID by using dollar state params global object. Let's pass the state param in the controller's constructor and use it. Here we need to use the route URL param as object property. Now let's call the then method and pass an anonymous function in it. And pass a param in the constructor create an object using dollar scope and name it student and assign the value passed in constructor now let's go to student controller in controls.api project Write a method named get student by ID. Make the method public and make the return type student. And pass an integer ID in the method as param. Create an instance of control context. Call students property of controls context and call the find method of base db context of entity framework and pass the integer id received in method param and return it. Now let's go to our student edit view and initialize the method get student by id of our angular.js controller at the beginning of form using ng init directive let's run the application go to student list click on edit button we did not get any data. Let's right click and inspect to read the error. It says no HTTP resource was found that matches the request URI because we did not add a forward slash between API route and the ID. Let's add a forward slash. Let's go to Visual Studio and add a forward slash between API route and the ID. Let's save all, go back to browser and reload the page. Great. This time we got our data. Now it's time to update our data. Let's do that in next lesson.